Worried about gout? Check out Euro, the effective urinary alkalinizer. Euro, neutralize your uric acid problem now. This is Kidney News and I'm your host Prasad. Pakatan Harapan wants all opposition parties to unite in order to stand a chance to defeat the mighty BN in Johor. However, the call to unite is a hard sell since even PKR itself won't be using the Harapan banner. Pejuang has criticised PKR for deciding to use its own logo for the Johor polls instead of the Pakatan Harapan logo. Pejuang's Marzuki Yahya said this flies in the face of Harapan's attempts to unite the opposition. Speaking to Malaysia Kini, he said Anwar invited other opposition parties to unite under the Pakatan Harapan banner, but the PKR leader ends up deciding that his party will use its own logo for the polls. Yesterday, Harapan chief Anwar Ibrahim announced the coalition's decision that PKR would use its own logo to contest in the Johor state election, while other component parties would stick with the Harapan banner. The decision was made following a Harapan presidential council meeting. The decision came just two days after Anwar said that Harapan would rope in all opposition parties, including Pejuang, Warisan and Muda, to contest in all 56 state seats in Johor. However, Pejuang has indicated that the party is not interested in joining hands with Harapan, with Marzuki describing the coalition as not a true opposition party. A veteran DAP leader has questioned the need for an opposition coalition if PKR can't even trust the shared logo. DAP veteran P. Ramasamy has hit out at PKR's decision to use its own logo. The Penang Second Deputy Chief Minister said this will have serious ramifications on Harapan as a coalition. In a statement this morning, he said if PKR does not trust the coalition's logo, then there is no point in having a coalition in the first place. Ramasamy also questioned how Harapan as a whole can broaden the coalition to face AMNO and BN in the next general election if they can't even use a common logo in a state election. Amana and DAP will continue to use the coalition's logo, however PKR has decided to use its own logo. Ramasamy said PKR's argument to abandon the Harapan logo was preposterous. He said the problem with Harapan was not the logo, rather its former chairperson Dr. Mahathir Mohamad. PKR has been fighting to return to its logo for much of last year. If PKR can't even agree to use the Harapan logo, of course it's too early for the coalition to come up with a Menteri Besar candidate. Simpang Rangam MP Mazli Malik says it's too early to discuss who will be PKR and Pakatan Harapan's candidate for Johor Menteri Besar. This comes after PKR's Kota Angadi Assembly person Najwan Halimi publicly expressed support for Mazli to be named as Harapan's Johor Menteri Besar candidate. Writing on Twitter, Mazli said the MB will only be appointed by Tuanku Sultan from the winner. Malaysia Kini previously reported that PKR was mulling to field Mazli in the state seat of Layang Layang and his name has also been floated as a potential Menteri Besar candidate. Mazli spent more than a year as an independent MP before joining PKR last year. Layang Layang is one of the two state seats within the parliamentary constituency of Simpang Rangam, where Mazli is the MP. With the opposition squabbling over a logo, Amna knows it's in a commanding position and they've even warned past to play nice if they want any chance of a cooperation. An Amno leader has warned that chances for past to work with Amno in Johor may disappear if the leaders from the Islamist party continue to attack Amno. Amno Information Chief Shahril Hamdan said past leaders are continuously criticizing Amno despite wanting to make friends. This comes after past ulama leader Mokta Sadiq said Amno had fallen back to its old ways of lusting for power. He said Amno's fall came following a series of major political victories, including successfully installing its own prime minister and winning a landslide victory in the Malacca polls. Shadow said the Amno Supreme Council and state liaison would study and make a final decision on whether to work with other parties in the Johor polls. Sharil pointed out that Mokhtar's statement was offensive to Amno members. He stressed that Amno will not be pressured into making a decision and advised parties wanting to offer an opinion to do so prudently. Since Amno is not going to work with Bersatu in Johor, one way to make sure you still have a job after the election may be to quit Bersatu. The Brau Bersatu Division Chief Maslan Mujang has officially quit the party and will be backing Joe Amno's Hasni Muhammad. With his departure, the Bersatu division is left without a leader. Mazlan said he would support Hasni to be reappointed as the Menteri Besar to ensure political stability and a better future for Johor. Mazlan was appointed Johor Bersatu chief in 2019. 17 months later, he vacated the position which was taken over by Bersatu President Muhyiddin Yassin. 
Hasni had appointed Mazlan into his cabinet, which lasted between March 2020 and early this month. Meanwhile, Kota Tinggi Amno Youth announced that it will not support former Johor Assembly persons from Bersatu if they get nominated to contest for Amno in the state election. Division Youth Chief Johan Azam Muhammad Yasin said they will not support political frogs. He said the action has no other intention other than to defend their respective seats by using UMNO as a tool. In G14, MCA lost all state seats contested in Johor. Now the party is hoping voters will give them another chance. MCA is hoping for a breakthrough in the Johor polls after being wiped out in the state in GE14. MCA Secretary General Chong Sin Woon is hopeful the party will regain ground after losing all 15 Johor state seats previously. He said what is upset with the 2018 regime change should give the BN Kapuna party a chance. However, Chong stopped short of revealing how many seats it was contesting or targeting to win this time around. He said people are sick and tired of political instability with mere slogans and sweet promises. Today, Chong declined to disclose MCA's plan for the Johor snap elections. He repeatedly said that seat allocation was up to the BN Supreme Council. Not so good news for Najib Abdul Razak. He has failed in his appeal to reinstate an account mismanagement suit. The Court of Appeal has unanimously dismissed Najib Abdul Razak's appeal to restore a lawsuit over a bank's alleged sharing of his account information to fugitive Joe Lo. On December 9, 2019, Najib filed a writ of summons against former banker Joanna Yu and M Bank for allegedly receiving instructions from and revealing his account information to Lo. Najib is appealing against the Kuala Lumpur High Court decision in 2020 which allowed an application by you and the bank to strike out his lawsuit against them. The High Court ruled that Najib's civil suit was an abuse of the court process. The court ruled that this was because the suit was initiated as a collateral attack to bolster his defence in the separate SRC International Criminal Court case against him. Yu was a prosecution witness in the 42 million SRC Criminal Court case while prosecutors contended that Lo acted on the behest of Najib in the monetary transactions linked to the former subsidiary of 1MDB. SRC later became wholly owned by the Minister of Finance Incorporated. In relation to the ongoing appeal in the SRC criminal court case, Najib's defence team contended that he had no knowledge of wrongdoings and claimed that third parties such as Lo were fully responsible for any wrongful monetary transactions. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Prasad. Thank you for watching.